for this ad only. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company has a pre-sale running through the 19th. Get your smoked Christmas hams, spiral cut around 10 pounds each. They are $65 and pickup will be in Cary, Ohio from December 21st through the 24th. Um, pickups are between either noon or after four o'clock. If you are interested in some Christmas smoked hams, be sure to email tmcbbq at gmail.com. That is tmcbbq at gmail.com or through his website, madcanadianbbq.com. If hams aren't your thing, be sure to pick up the great seasonings that the <laughs> Mad Canadian has over at themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company where he has your butt or ham covered <laughs> for Christmas. This episode of the SLOOPCAST also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who are the Iron Bean Coffee Company, Kyle? They are a Ohio-based coffee roaster. Whether you mute your phone or not, they're an Ohio-based coffee <laughs> roaster. Uh, they're based out of Perrysburg, Ohio, which is near Toledo. Uh, they are veteran-owned. They are a small batch roaster. They are a roast-to-order roaster. So your beans are fresh. They're, they're fresh roasted. You're, you're not getting stuff that's been on a shelf in a warehouse or at a grocery store for weeks or months on end. All of the beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. What else do you want? Jared, Jared, I like K cups. He's got K cups. <laughs> Three of his coffees are available in K cup, including the fierce, the rage against the dying light or the ride or die. I believe is the third one. I did that one off the top of my head. That one was for memory. So I think it's those three, but you can check for yourself on the website. Uh, there are flavored coffees, including a mom's carrot cake, an intense blueberry, and a mint chocolate chip. And there's all sorts of different coffees available that are unflavored, medium roast, dark roast, black roast, uh, and a bunch of ones that are a mix in between. So make sure to check out all of those at the iron, excuse me, not the, just ironbeancoffee.com, ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. <sighs> you good? Yeah. I just need a deep breath after that. Yes. Dare say some... Oh, you're drinking beer. I was going to say dare say some coffee. Listen, Kyle, we've had this conversation before. On the Friday episodes, we drink beer. On the Monday episodes, we drink coffee. Yes, that is true. You're always drinking beer. You're an alcoholic. How dare you? <laughs> How dare dare you all right let's rejoin our audio listeners i drink way more than him that's the joke just for everyone listening that's the joke we've got barbecue back here you're all invited welcome to the sloopcast how are you doing today kyle doing pretty well how are you today jared i have no complaints we're a week away from christmas we're a week away from Christmas. Oh, thank and there's football still. And, yeah. Well, nor <laughs> this is normally like peak, like Independence Bowl territory, right? Is that is that about mm -hmm. what would be happening right now under we'd a normal year? We'd be ready year? to talk some. Yeah, we'd be ready to talk some um, bowl games here. Uh sort of. <laughs> we never really hit those. We talk. We talk about the the other sponsors. Oh yeah, bowl yeah. Games. Uh, I'm gonna miss I'm gonna miss bowl season just because of the amount of fun we make of it, not for actual bowl season. Yeah. Uh, but th thank you for reminding me of Christmas, Kyle. Because uh, important thing to mention off the top of the show: um, next Friday is Christmas. Uh, this Sunday is the selection show. The selection show could go all day. Uh, Kyle and I basically made the decision, and I don't know if it's gonna be Tuesday or Wednesday yet. We're doing one episode next week. We'll recap the the Ohio State Northwestern game, obviously, and we'll talk about the final bowl selection, where everyone falls into place, what that means, blah 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 blah. Uh, but one episode next week, it'll be out either Tuesday or Wednesday. 
Uh, we haven't made that choice yet, but it'll be one of those two days. So just keep an eye out for it, or I guess an ear, depending upon how you listen to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, one other quick thing before we get started. Um, I want to do this at the top of the show. The I really want everyone to check out our Patreon page. Kyle and I have made the promise to go daily. We'll do the Sloopcast daily, starting in Season 7. If you guys hit our Patreon goal, which you can see at patreon.thesloopcast.com. That's it. It's we we basically we we our current pledge is like 360. It's like 360 on the website. It's like 340 by the time Patreon gets their cut. That's that's what we get. That's it. That that's ad that's ad revenue and everything. That's what we get monthly for doing the show. Um if we can get that number up to 550, Kyle and I will start doing the podcast daily during football season. And we'll also add a second episode during the off season. But yes. we have to hit that 550 mark. Mm-hmm. All right, yes. that's it. Uh that's it, Kyle. Let's let's get into the actual show. All right. We have the early signing period as yes. we are recording this right now. And all 21 yeah. of Ohio State's verbal commits have officially signed. Yeah. Uh, things played out pretty much the way we predicted they would play out a week ago on our national signing early period, whatever the hell we called that show last Friday. Twenty. We, we said 20 players would sign, 21 if Abuka signed. Uh, or rather, if he committed, we said he would sign if he committed. And we told you he'd probably commit. He did. And he did. He signed. He committed. He did the whole thing. The other 20 members of the class who were already committed also signed. Uh, JT Tui Molau did not sign, which we weren't expecting him to because he's not committed anywhere yet. He's going to take a couple more months and figure things out. That's what we are expecting him to do. Uh, Rajon Davis, a linebacker currently committed to LSU, did not sign yet during the early signing period. Early signing period's three days. Kyle and I are only aware of one of those days so far, but we told you he wasn't going to sign. He hasn't signed yet. We don't expect him to. Uh, Right now, and this can change because we have a couple months to go, but right now it feels a little coin flippy between uh, USC and and he's from California, so that makes sense. Or Ohio State. That's it. Like 40, 40, and then like 20% reserved for other. Might be like 45, 45, 10. Mm-hmm. Might be a little bit more accurate. Is about where we are with Rajon Davis. And I still, I expect Ohio State to add a additional offensive lineman at some point. That might be from the 2021 class. Maybe it's the transfer portal. They wanted to add another offensive lineman. I don't have another name for you. I can't say to you, oh, they really like so-and-so. They're really pursuing so-and-so. I don't have a name for you. But they did want to add an additional offensive lineman to this class. Maybe they make up for that in the transfer portal. Maybe they check out a 2021 kid, uh, maybe in state or nearby, who they feel like they could swoop in and snag at the last second. So that that's where we're at. They're specifically targeting two players and I, they, they need an additional body along the offensive line and they'll, yes. they'll, they'll find one, one way or another, I imagine. Mm-hmm. So looking at this 21 commits for Ohio state, uh, still about nine points behind Alabama Pretty sure Alabama's got this one no. locked down. No, no, for... no, no, no. Absolutely no? not. Absolutely not. All right. Tell well, us. A couple episodes. I think, was it the national mm-hmm. early sign? It was the one a week ago where I laid out how Ohio State and Bama might finish the classes and how, was that, was that Friday? Okay. So on that episode, I basically said, if Ohio State signs these guys, which I, expect them to do, which was basically Mm -hmm. their current class plus Abuka and Abuka is now signed. So he's, he's good. And then I also included Davis and Tui Molau. Now 
for USC, I gave them their current class plus two people. One of those people has uh, signed with Georgia today, to our today on Wednesday. And the other defensive end, um, oh, I'm going to forget his, uh, Adelie. He, uh, if you believe the crystal balls, and they're normally pretty good, uh, is trending hard to Texas A&M right now. So, and then a guy I didn't even mention at the time, a wide receiver who, uh, out of the state of California, currently committed, well, he's committed, committed to to Michigan now, but was a guy that a lot of people were eyeing as a possible flip to Alabama, despite the fact that he committed to Michigan months ago, he had another commitment video come out today. Like, so he was, he was pocket decommitted. Is that a thing? It is now. I just made it up. He was a pocket decommit, but he, you know, recommitted or reaffirmed to Michigan today and signed today. So three of the biggest names out there available who could have signed with Bama didn't. So I, and like, don't shed any tears for Alabama. They still have the number one class in the country, but as far as having like a, a bad start to the early, uh, you know, a bad start to the early signing period, they had a bad start to the early signing period. But uh, it does appear that the Delier isn't signing yet. So there's, there's time to be made up there. But mm-hmm. it does seem to, he does seem to be trending pretty hard to Texas A&M at the moment. Yep. So currently right now, Ohio State number two. And just add, the top. At add, add JTT in their number one. Um, and then running out the top 10, Georgia, LSU, Clemson, Oregon, Oklahoma, Florida, Notre Dame, and Miami. Miami, Miami got a really good pickup. Um, on Wednesday here, they appear to have gotten their quarterback as one of the top quarterbacks in the country, Jake Garcia. Yeah, uh, Michigan fell out of the top 10. Uh, they lost two commits on Wednesday. They didn't They didn't lose the wide receiver, so that, that was great for them. They did get a commitment from and a signature from Donovan, Donovan Edwards, I believe is his name. Yep. Uh, uh, a guy that Ohio State had a really good relationship early on before they signed two other players, the two running backs who eventually end up in the class, of course, uh, Henderson and help me out, Kyle. I'm, I'm blanking on uh, Pryor, Henderson and Pryor. Yes. Um, so they they had a, you know, they lost a couple guys on Wednesday, but they also still fo- uh, sign five top 100 players, four of them on the offense, one of them a five-star quarterback. Why a five-star quarterback would want to go to Michigan seeing what Harbaugh has done with and to his quarterbacks at Michigan, I have no idea, but he's doing it. So more power to him. Mm-hmm. But that's uh, that's just how things are going at Michigan right now, kind of a mix of good and bad. And how many top 100 does Ohio State have? A lot more than five. But, you know, are, are, aren't we done comparing Ohio State and Michigan at this point? Isn't that game over? Should be. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, anything else early signing period, Kyle? Uh, let's see. I want to I want to see if there's anybody else worthwhile. That kind of jumps out to me here. Um, Big news items. I, I think we covered most of it as far as it relates so. to. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I think we're good. I think so too. The the biggest cool. thing is is that the three things for Ohio State that we expected to happen happened, which mm-hmm. is one that all twenty one players signed, two JTT didn't sign, and no one thought he was, but he he didn't. He did come out with his top five. He did come out with his top five, and uh, Rajon Davis did not sign at LSU. I can tell you with near certainty he's not going to LSU. Might be USC, might be Ohio State, might be somewhere else, but it's not going to be LSU. So, yep. another. So once again, like that's another pocket decommit. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Let's well, go ahead. You you mentioned JTT's top five. Who are they? Yes, uh, it is USC, Alabama, Oregon, Washington, and your 
fighting Buckeyes. Let me ask you this, Kyle. I want to I know how much attention you're paying to me and my, all of my recruiting talk lately. Never. Who are... This should be a top three. This this should be a top three. Mm-hmm. Who are the top three? If he was being honest, if he was being brutally honest, this would be a top three. Who are they? It would be Washington, Mm-mm. Ohio State. No. In Oregon? No. USC. Yeah, no, it's it's USC, Alabama, and Ohio State. Mm, okay. Not Washington anymore? No, I, I, he's including them because he has a good relationship with them and because, you know, they, they're the in-state. He's from Washington. They're the in-state school. He's throwing them a bone by including them in this graphic. He's not going to Washington. He's not going to Oregon either. USC is putting together a really nice recruiting class, including along the defensive line. They're very much still the favorite to sign uh, who who's not committed yet. The number one player in the 24 seven sports composite and Alabama's Alabama. So you never count out Alabama, mm-hmm. but Ohio yeah, state you... does that. That that's he's uh, Ohio state's still a leader in the clubhouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, yeah, USC definitely doing pretty well. They are, where are they right now? They're 12th right now in the rankings. Last year, 64. Yeah. And then the year before, 20. And then 2018 is when they had that really good class with um, where they were ranked fourth. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, so if their 2018 class was ranked fourth, you would think that this would be the year then. 2021 for USC to make a splash. I mean, oh, they're undefeated 20, right now. I was about to say, I thought they're undefeated. Were, yeah, they, they're <laughs> undefeated. They've 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 beaten everyone they've played. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Kyle. Anything else for National Signing Day? Nope. That's it. Let's move period. on to the college football rankings. The top four didn't change. Are we done? One note about that, yeah. or two notes. One. Okay. I mean, I'm done. You 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 talk. Iowa State moved up to seven. Very crucial. Keep an eye on that, depending on how this weekend plays out. They're outside shot to get in. I don't even know who's um, number five, but Texas A&M. Texas? They're not getting in. They're not getting in. There's, to me, zero shot. Zero shot for mm-hmm. Texas A&M to get in. I wouldn't say zero. I feel like if... The only way the only way they're getting in, Jared, is if Ohio State loses. That's why I'm saying there's zero yeah. shot. Zero shot. <laughs> okay, a bit of a preview to the know your enemy section. <laughs> I, I'm not saying zero. Maybe, maybe a point one. Point yeah, one. Ninety nine point nine percent chance. I'd rather they will miss it. Yeah, I don't know. It's. I'd rather have the the winner of Oklahoma, Iowa State in there than Texas A and M. Texas A and M is so overblown for reasons we went into more detail yeah. on on the Monday episode that I don't feel yep. like getting into right now. Nope. Either way, all we need to know, all, all we care about, Ohio State wins, they're in. Yeah. If Ohio Done. State wins, they're in. Don't, don't. Done. Listen, the, the folks on ESPN who don't like it and the coaches out there who don't so, like it, they're well, not in the committee room. How, how, how many in the past two years, Jared? How many losses have Ohio State had? Uh, uh, one last year. One the year before. Well, this year and last year. Under under Coach Day. Oh, under Coach Day one. Only one loss. Only one loss. So you can't tell me that they're not a a top team. Te- technically, we're not supposed to take last year into consideration, but it's 2020. Like, the rules are out the freaking book. So, yeah. whatever. Kyle, let's do sloop picks. Yes, sir. All right, doing some sloop picks. We actually have seven games to go over. Isn't that a miracle? Uh... It is a miracle. Uh, let's see. <laughs> it's also early in the week is what Kyle's trying to tell me. By the way, <laughs> Indiana does end up canceling their game with Purdue, or rather it was a mutual cancellation, to be technically correct. So does, so does the uh, Michigan game, too. Michigan game also cancels. But I, I, I point out the Indiana game because it's important to point out that if the commit, if the Big Ten, rather, if the Big Ten had not changed the minimum six-game rule, that Penn State at, what are they, three and four? Three and five. Three and, three and five. Four? 
Penn State would have been the representative for the East in the Big Ten championship game. So please tell me once again how the Big Ten did the wrong thing by eliminating that rule. I that's fine. I'll I'm, I'll I'll wait. My my email box is open twenty four seven. My email box does not close at five o'clock. You tell me why I'm wrong. Sloopcast at gmail dot com. And just think, Jared, if Rutgers beat Penn State, it would have been them. Rutgers <laughs> sitting there at three and five as well. Does Rutgers have? Well, how many wins? How many games does Rutgers have? It's they're both they're three and five as well. Oh, okay. Wasn't Penn State, isn't someone technically ahead of Penn State, but also doesn't have five games? Is that right? Maryland. Maryland. So based it would have been... Percent, based off a of percentage, yeah. they're ahead of Penn, of Penn State. So it would have been fourth place Penn State in the game. Just, again, another yeah. another example of 2020. You look at the Fire top, Kevin Warren. You look at the top teams here. Ohio State. Okay. Yeah. Indiana, Maryland. Penn State and Rutgers. I mean, Rutgers ahead of both teams up north. Yeah. Not not a banner year for the state of Michigan. No. Kyle, no. slew picks. Let's do them. Yes, sir. All right, let's start off. We got the Raging Cajuns. By the way, I sent an email to a guest picker who was signed up, and uh, they they didn't respond in time. I, I did send the email to them late because we were watching COVID stuff, but... Uh, didn't get a response back in time. So oops. The That's raging it. Cajuns, Jared <laughs> versus coastal Carolina. Oh, sorry. One more interruption. Uh, oh, we Jared. said, we said on the Monday show that, uh, we defeated Dinger. We mm-hmm. had a mistake in our calculations and, uh, Dinger defeated us. So I just, I just want to set the record straight on that. Sorry. The raging Cajuns. Keep keep doing your thing, Kyle. I apologize. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm I'm done. I'm done. Inter- I'm done interrupting you. I promise. You sure, this I, won't be the last time. I, well, no, I for the next minute. <laughs> <laughs> the raging Cajuns taking on Coastal Carolina. It is a is that is that Saturday? That is Saturday. It is Saturday all, all of these at, are Saturday. Well. Is that true? No, they're not. No, okay. they're not. Okay, I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Um, it is 2.30 kickoff. Coastal Carolina is a three and a half point favorite. Who do you got, Jared? Uh, let's see. We have Coastal Carolina, a three and a half point favorite. And I tell you what, I'd have taken them at two and a half. But I'm not going to take them at three and a half. Give me the raging Cajuns. Well, I'll take, I'll take the chanties. Take the chanties. Is that how you guys say it down there in North Carolina know. land? I don't know. Coastal Carolina. It's aren't they Sun Belt? South aren't Carolina. They? They're absolutely Sun Belt. Yeah. Are they South Carolina? I thought they were North Carolina. I have no idea. You're from the Carolinas. You tell me. No, they're no, yeah, they're in South Carolina. Oh, I don't know. I don't care either, to be honest with you. So, uh, first difference already. All right. Next up, this one is but Kyle. I'm one. I'm one ahead in the slew picks. So one difference is huge. Hmm. Um. We better write these down because they don't. They're not in our in our website that we used. No, CBS. Go go f yourself. <laughs> that's it. That, that's all. I'm, I'm, just, I'm not going to waste any time talking about it other than that. All right. So you picked the Cajuns. I picked Costa Carolina. All right. Uh, Friday game at eight o'clock. USC taking on Oregon. Oregon replacing Washington for the Pac-12 championship. USC is a three and a half point favorite. Copy and paste my answer from before. I'd have taken USC at two and a half, but at three and a half, I'm going Oregon. All right. I got Oregon too. I got Oregon to cover. I think this will be a nail biter right to the end. All right. Next up here, we have Iowa State and Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship. This is a nooner. 
and the Sooners are a four and a half point favorite. I think that's too much. That's too much for me, Jared. That's too much. I will take. I will stick to my Cyclones. You you've been ro- you've been riding that. I was gonna say hurricane. You've been riding that tornado all year. Go weather. <laughs> Kyle <laughs> likes his weather teams. Uh, I I disagree. I'm going with Oklahoma. All right. Uh, four and a half. I I would have maybe gotten nervous with this one at about seven and a half. I think that's where I was about with this game. So we're under mm-hmm. seven and a half. So I'm going with Oklahoma. All right. Cool. All right, let's see. We have here. And a half. We have Clemson and Notre Dame part two. Yep. With four o'clock kickoff and the Tigers are a 10 and a half point favorite. Kyle, pause the slew picks. What if, what if, if Clemson wins this by 11 points? Mm-hmm. Is that enough to disqualify the Notre Dame Fighting Irish from the playoff? It's it's hard. It's hard to take them out. But what if Iowa State wins then? I, this is what I'm asking. I'm just glad I'm not in the committee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not in the committee because that's tough. That's tough. I mean, we never had a two-loss team in then how could you leave out a conference championship over a, a non? I mean, it's happened a couple of times. Already, it's, it's happened. But... It's happened. They, it's happened a lot more than a two loss team getting mm-hmm. in, which has happened. Never. Mm-hmm. I, I think, I think if I was a betting man, which I'm not, don't real life gamble, but I would, I think no matter what happens in Notre Dame or Alabama, I don't think it matters to them if they win or lose for them to get into the playoffs. Is there a point? Is there a, is there a final score difference? Is there a score differential that eliminates Notre Dame in your mind? Is What if it's three touchdowns? What if it's 21 points? Does that eliminate Notre Dame in your mind? And there's a the stat score... out there and I'm, I, I might not get the number exactly right, but there's a stat out there that says a team that has lost by more than 24 and a half. I, I might be getting the number wrong, but it's in that neighborhood that is lost by 24 and a half. I guess probably just 24. Maybe if it's something like has a, never gotten into the playoffs. Maybe it's something like a 59 to nothing type of win here. So it takes 59. It takes a score differential of 59 <laughs> to eliminate Notre Dame in your mind. Sure. <laughs> or I'm sure that was just for the meme, but I want an actual answer. Oh, uh, how you know bad what? does we'll Notre go, we'll Dame? Go 25. We'll go 25. Okay. We'll go 25. Okay. That's how bad Notre Dame has to lose by in order to get eliminated from the playoff per Kyle. Mm-hmm. All right. So I would Clemson put it in cover. I'd put it Clemson at to cover. Yeah. Or... Clemson's going to destroy Notre Dame. Clemson's going to absolutely run Notre Dame off the field. You sure? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Clemson's going to destroy Notre Dame. I would go with Notre Dame here. Ten and a half is too oh, much. Oh, the slew picks are mine. I'm going to win the slew picks. Notre Dame. Notre Dame is able, as we've seen in that first game, is able to run all over this Clemson team. They're able to throw it. They're able to run it. The difference here, it's going to come down to going to be it's going to be one of those games that whoever has the ball last and scores is going to win it here one team severely out recruits and out talents the other team the one team has one of the best college football quarterbacks uh i don't i don't want to say ever that that might be a little too far but trevor lawrence is amazing Ian book has come a long way. I used to put Ian book in the same conversation as like Sam Ellinger. And he's not that anymore. He's improved. He's better now, but he's just not on the same level as, as Trevor Lawrence. Mm-hmm. And I just, just this Clemson defense is not what it's been the past couple of years. Yeah, but it won't matter. I agree with you. No one's defense is all that great this year. It won't matter. I'll, I'll take Notre Dame. To, I'll take Notre Dame to cover. I mean, it's 10 and a half. It might be, Clemson might win by 10. And it would be a cover. 
I think I think the number is going to be more like seventeen. Okay. I, I think I think it would honestly it would honestly take like fifteen and a half to get me to take Notre Dame. Okay. All right. To be different there. All right. Is that three Except- differences already? Mm-hmm. Oh man, this last week of the slew picks is going to be fun. All right, next game: Alabama and Florida. Why the hell, Jared? How the hell? Why the hell? How Who the, the hell? hell? Who the hell? What the hell? Ranked Florida at number six here. I, I, I don't want to get into it. It's it's just such a circular BS. That's just it's, a it's seven, big old right? middle finger. It's a, it's seven, right? Not six. Well, here it's showing they're sixth. Okay. That's fine. That's Whatever. a big old middle finger to Coach Fickle. Yeah. In the in the Cincinnati Bearcats, they're saying, "Hey, you you guys look really good." And competition, okay, but you guys looked really good in the games that you've played. You're undefeated. Oh, we're going to keep dropping you every week here while you have a two-loss Florida team who lost who lost to a a sub-500 terrible LSU team with half of their team out to, with COVID. And losing to a freshman quarterback at home. Keep going. You're you're on a How roll. How the hell is Florida ranked number six? Keep going. No, I'm going to take Alabama to win here by more than 17. I I was really hoping that was going to end. <laughs> I don't know where I was hoping it was going to end, but I was having fun listening to you. This is this is going to be Kyle Trask's end here. He's not going to look good against this Alabama defense. Florida is going to get destroyed. I actually think Kyle Trask ends up looking pretty good in this game. I just think that Alabama's offense is so overpowering that it won't matter. So I'm also picking Alabama, but I disagree with you that Kyle Trask is going to look bad in this game. I don't think so. I think this will be the game that the NFL scouts watch the most because of the talent he's facing. So I think he has the most to prove here. And I think he looks really great in a loss in a loss by a lot because Alabama is going to score on every drive. If they want to Bama's pass defense or excuse me, Florida's pass defense is atrocious. And yes. Mac Jones is a fine quarterback. He shouldn't win a Heisman, but he's a fine quarterback. But the wide receivers at Alabama are just next level. Stupid. Good. I'll, 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 Mac Jones has to do is toss the ball up there and the guys go get it. And they're open by 10 yards on a fly pattern. You can't stop Bama. No one's stopping Bama this year. You're just going to have to outscore them. And by far, it is by far the highest over under of any of the conference championship games at 74 and a half. Yeah. There's going to be points scored. S say, say, yeah, there's going to be a lot of points scored. And I, I do think that, like I said, I think Bama wins probably by like 24, 28 points. It was about where I think it goes. But yeah, so give me Bama to yep. win and cover. All right. Next game here where the over under is 30 points less. Pro- than probably the, more as- like 21, by the way. I, I want to walk that back. It'll win by like 21. The next conference championship game where the over under is... 30 less points in the SEC championship game. The AAC with Tulsa and Cincinnati. Cincinnati is a 13 and a half point favorite. Who do you got, Jared? Who do I got? Who do you got? Who do I got? Um, I got Cincinnati. Um, Are you taking Tulsa? I'm going to take Tulsa. Yeah, I'll take Tulsa. I, 13 and a half is just a little too much for me. Their only loss, their only loss was to Oklahoma State, which they made it, they made it a good good game. It was 16 to 7. Uh, and they didn't get to play Cincinnati this year. It was it was canceled. Uh, and I think they were supposed, yeah, they were supposed to play last weekend, but it got canceled. And it's the second time it was canceled. Yes, it was postponed earlier in the year and then canceled last weekend. So here we are here. I I, I don't know. I just, I think this is going to be a really close game, low scoring as what the over-under um, suggests here. I think Tosa really, really makes it difficult for Cincinnati here. What's so the sp- I, would take, I would take 
the Golden Hurricane. Ooh, another weather team. Mm -hmm. Kyle, remind remind the listeners what the spread is. The spread is 13 and a half. 13. That's a, that's a mm -hmm. great number yeah, no. to, to pick the Bearcats. Okay. Okay, hold on. 8 no. Cincinnati is. 8 no. Mm -hmm. First game, they win by 35 points. Second mm -hmm. game, they win by 14 points. Yep. Third game, 21 points. Mm -hmm. uh, 29 points mm -hmm. on the fourth game. Mm -hmm. 39 points. Yep. 28 points. Yep. Um, that math's a little bit harder to do with a microphone in front of me. 28, Jared. 28 points. <laughs> and then again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 38. 38 points. Even and then better. against a really good UCF team, they only won by three. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think again a really good Tulsa team. They also and a half. yeah they also played a really good SMU team, and that was a game in which they absolutely slaughtered SMU. They played South Florida, who was pretty good, slaughtered them. It's I Cincinnati's defense is one of the few good defenses in college football this year. Tulsa's played no one like them this year. The Cincinnati defense will ensure that Cincinnati both wins and covers. Kyle, is that four differences already? It is. Oof. Do we have it's one more game to pick? Wild finish here, Jared. Wild finish. Yes, we have one last game. And it will be in Indianapolis, the house that Peyton Manning built. Mm -hmm. Featuring the Northwestern Wildcats mm -hmm. and your fighting Buckeyes of Ohio State. This is a nooner on Fox. And you know what that means if it's a nooner on Fox on Saturday. Hurt my feelings. Hurt my feelings. Gus Johnson special. Ohio State, Jared, 19 and a half points, which is the largest spread of these games that we're covering here. Kyle? Yes, Jared. Did you say Gus Johnson? Oh, I sure did. I'm excited. Did you say Fox? Yep. Uh, did you say Indianapolis? Pretty sure. Did you say Peyton Manning? Yes, yes but I don't know did. why. <laughs> did you say hurt my feelings? No, oh, you did. <laughs> good, good, good catch. I was, yes. trying, I was trying to get you on that one. So what time is it? It is time to know your enemy. Know your enemy. The North Western Wild Cats. But Kyle, before we get to know our enemy, we must get to know our sponsors. Kyle, tell us about the Mad Canadian. Mad Canadian is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. With great seasonings, Jared, as the S&P bud, the Discord, mm -hmm. the Sonoran Heat, uh -huh. or one of your favorites, the Coffee and Q. Yes, sir. Can't go wrong with any of those great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. It is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Sure to use a promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. While you're there, be sure to check out the three gift sets. I'll call them gift sets. Gift sets that the Mad Canadian has. He has the Just Send It, consists of four seasonings in this package. The Sweet Heat, also four, or the Whole Hog, which is each of the 14 seasonings over at the Mad Canadian's lab? Call it his sure. lab? His Mad Lab? Sure. Sure. Be sure to check out all those great seasonings. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, you mentioned that coffee in Q. Do you know what's yes. in that? It's the cast iron. The cast iron is a medium roast coffee made with 100% single origin Arabica beans. Those beans, by the way, are certified organic. Those beans, by the way, are fair trade certified. If you know anything about the potential morality of uh, some of the issues that take place at coffee farms, then you know that 
a fair trade certified bean, you know that you don't have to worry about any of that because it's fair trade certified. If you, uh, so yeah, the cast iron is a medium roast. So is the ride or die. The rage against the dying light is also a medium roast. And then there is the Thor, which is a, it's a, it's a half medium, half dark. The Loki, which is a half medium, half light. Or the Rocco, which you can get in one of two varieties, either medium or dark. So do you like medium beans? Do you like dark beans? You're covered either way is I guess what I'm getting at. You have an amazing selection either way. And there are also flavored coffees available. Uh, I already mentioned three of them. But the fourth one, because I think the, the seasonal special has run out. The fourth one is the unicorn and what's in the unicorn you you just don't know that's it you might you, and it's not going to be it might not be the same thing twice you just never know it's from their r&d lab and it's uh it's good whatever it was i liked it so you can check out all of that and more at ironbeancoffee.com that's iron bean coffee america's local coffee roaster kyle let's get to know north, our anime north western wildcats I did not write the the um this down, whatever it's called. The record. <laughs> the record. They the are six important. that is. They are they are six and one entering the Big Ten Championship game with their only loss uh coming to if I Michigan down State. here to Michigan State, which is really odd. Very odd. <laughs> Very odd. This could have been a team of two undefeated teams. Northwestern possibly even a chance to go to the the playoffs too if they won that game. But here we are. Sit, they are sitting six and one. Um, you look at this team here. You look at the stats, and nothing really just seems to really just jump out at you. Just a mediocre offense. <laughs> They're. They're averaging 350 yards a game, scoring 25 points a game. They're letting up. Defense is decent. They, they've they let up a little more than 300 yards a game and letting up almost 15 points a game, too. They're le- they are led onto the field by quarterback Peyton Ramsey, which, for anybody who knows that name... No, it's to the YouTube viewers. Don't don't worry about it. I messed something up, but it's fine. Keep going. Okay. Peyton, Peyton Ramsey, a former Hoosier, is taking this team on the verge of a Big Ten championship. Kyle, let's. Uh, this is not a thing we've had an opportunity to do much this year because, mm-hmm. well, because 2020. That's okay. one of. It's one of our new favorite phrases on the show because 2020. Let's look at some common opponents. You want to do that? Yeah, let's do it. All right. uh, Both teams played Nebraska. Yes. Nebraska loses both of those games. So Mm -hmm. our our, our teams in question win both of those games. Uh, Northwestern defeats Nebraska 21 to 13. Yes. Nebraska lost to Ohio State 52 to 17. Ooh, it's it's a beat down. That's a beat down. Uh, both teams played Michigan State. Mm-hmm. Ohio State defeated Michigan State 52 to 12. It's another beat down. Yeah. Uh, Northwestern lost to Michigan State 29 to 20 in a game in which they had a lot of turnovers. Mm-hmm. I think it was like five, seven turnovers or something, something a lot like that. Uh, seven feels like a ton, but yeah, don't, don't, don't waste time looking it up. Well, it's uh, just four. Okay, seven's a, seven's a lot. <laughs> Seemed like seven. <laughs> um, let's see. They both played. No, they didn't both play Maryland. Kyle, is that it? That's it. That is because Haas State did not play Illinois. They did yeah. not play Wisconsin, Purdue, Iowa, and the Maryland game got canceled. That's it. Just two games well, were, to compare. They were supposed to play Illinois as well, but that also got canceled. Mm-hmm. So uh, I thought that was going to be more fun than it was, and I apologize. <laughs> 2020. Uh, 2020, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Uh, Kyle, what can you tell us about their their offense? So Peyton Ramsey here, 
Uh, he's thrown for over 1,200 yards, six touchdowns, nine interceptions for the year. Uh, definitely more of a scrambler. He's rushed it for 64 times, Jay. Is he? 64 times. Yeah, but at 2.6 average, does that qualify him as a scrambler or as a guy who falls forward a lot? That sounds like a guy who moves up into the pocket and doesn't get sacked, but instead gets tackled for like a three yard gain. Uh, Kyle, I think, is it fair to say that the strength of this team is not on the offense? Definitely not. Definitely. Definitely not. They have a pair of good receivers. Uh, not, not, not great receivers, but good receivers, good serviceable receivers. They have two dedicated wide receivers, much like Ohio state. These guys have caught most of the passes this year. Uh, one of them, Kyle, I'm going to stretch before I say this name. Ramad Chakiao Bowman. Chakiao Bowman. Chakiao. You were going Chakiao Bowman. Okay. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Or you can just call him RCB. RCB. I love a three initial name. Uh, that's it's like JTT. And JTB. Oh, and TMC. I, I do it a lot. Uh, sometimes sometimes it's JF1. Sometimes you have to throw a number in there just to keep people guessing. Mm-hmm. Don't forget about CO2. Yes, CO2. And the other receiver is Kyrick McGowan. Yeah, uh, these guys have a combined... 69 catches for 677 yards. Kyle, you look like you wanted to say something. Nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never let the opportunity go. Never let it die. Well, if you watched it on YouTube, I gave a little. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um, yeah, it's in their, in their running backs. Nothing spectacular with the running backs. Um, we've seen Isaiah Bowser before. He's, he's had some good games in last year in 2019. Not so much this year where he's averaging about four yards a carry right now. And um, and then Drake Anderson also getting a um, hefty amount of carries too. He's averaging three yards a carry. I think as a whole, the team is averaging like three point two 3.4 yards per game yeah um, and yeah carry. you almost look you almost look at their rushing not total their rushing yards per game see 170 yards and ask yourself where the hell it's coming from because it's, it's house or how to say northwestern is that type of offense where they're going to try to keep ohio state's offense off of the field as much as possible they're going to get like three yards four yards, three yards, five yards, three yards, four yards, just small, small. Their, their game last week, I'm going to, I'm going to be in the ballpark with these numbers. I'm going to be in the ballpark with these numbers. Mm -hmm. Their game last week, they ascent, they pretty much finished off the game at some point in the fourth quarter, Kyle, if you're looking up drives mm -hmm. with like a 17 play drive where they averaged under or about four yards per play. That's that's it. So it's like a four play or a 17 play 76 yard drive or something crazy like that. Let's see here. The so the towards the end of the first half. No, so it would have been seven, in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Well, in the end of the first half. They went 17 plays, 84 yards for over seven minutes. All right. Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe it was the end of the first half or maybe mm -hmm. they did it twice. Did they have a similar drive in the, in the fourth quarter? In the fourth quarter, they had a 10 play, 81 yard, nine play, 38 yard. <laughs> nine play, 38 yard is almost as good. <laughs> that is, uh, well, that one ended up in a punt, but either way, yeah, that, that, uh, 17 play 64 yard here okay four yards five yards no 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 yard one yard on a fourth and one five yards four four incomplete loss of a yard passing complete a 17 yard pass four yards three yards two yards three yards three yards <laughs> five yards for anyone five yards two yards <laughs> 
<laughs> By the way, if that sounded boring, if listening to Kyle do that sounded boring to you, just know that it was much worse actually watching the game happen. <laughs> I, I actually watched that happen, and believe me, it was worse. That is crazy. Only one play, only one play that went over six yards. Yeah. That's, they, that's they had a, they had a, pa- they had a um, pass interference that put them at the two from the seven yard line to the two yard line. So yep. even that was still less than their one play that they um, on fourth and eight. Kyle, that they completed a pass for seventeen yards. Let's, but yeah. let's, please, please for God's sakes, let's stop talking about their offense. <laughs> All right, their defense here. Defense is led by a very, and I mean a very veteran. Uh, defense here. You look at the um, look on the right here, Jared. Their defensive starters mm-hmm. on their their front seven here. You ready for this? Go for it. Sophomore, senior, 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 senior. Whoa, senior, whoa, whoa, whoa. Senior. you're not doing it justice. R- redshirt senior, senior, <laughs> senior, senior. Okay. Redshirt S- senior. Sophomore, redshirt senior, 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 redshirt senior, senior. Junior, redshirt freshman, senior. Junior in the secondary. Yeah, we'll get to that freshman <laughs> here in a little bit, but a very, very, very veteran team. And what did we say at the beginning of this year? The teams that are going to really be able to um, do well this year or potentially do well this year is teams who have a lot of um, experienced players. Right. Northwestern is that, is that type of team here. Teams that did not experience a lot of turnover either in the coaching or in the player departments. I mean, I mean, you look at you look at even their offense here. Senior, senior, senior. They have a freshman on the line. Senior, junior, junior. Senior, graduate, graduate, junior. Again, very, very um, uh, experienced on both sides of the field here. Well, and so that's tells, and, and like I'm not trying to I'm not trying to shit on Northwestern, but that's how Northwestern's good. Mm-hmm. Yes, that that no, that's absolutely. the formula for Northwestern mm-hmm. to be good. They yep, don't get like, amazing recruiting classes. They bring guys in, and if you can get a bunch of your, if you can get a bunch of redshirt seniors and seniors to all sort of be peaking at the same time, that's how Northwestern is good. Yep. Yep, they're, they're led on to the defensive side by linebackers Patty Fisher and Blake Gallagher. Gallagher. Uh, both both have 65 tackles, each have an interception, each have a fumble recovery. Just a very Northwestern style linebackers. That yeah, they have. Blake Gallagher has just shy of 10 tackles for a loss this year, which is impressive. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they also have on that line a veteran um, defensive end of um, Ernest Brown, who has five tackles, five and a half tackle for loss. But the interesting thing here, when I was looking up some stats and the team for Northwestern, yeah, they have a redshirt freshman on this team. And get to know this guy here, um, freshman Brandon Joseph, corner, has 44 tackles, which is a lot for a corner. It is. He has a tackle for loss, but more importantly here, Jared, five interceptions for the year. Five interceptions over seven games for a redshirt freshman who plays for Northwestern. And again, I'm not trying to shit on Northwestern, but Kyle read off to you what this team's makeup is. That's what a Northwest, that's what a good Northwestern team looks like. Because they're not necessarily a team that's getting a lot of talent straight out of high school. So to have a freshman starting at left tackle and to have a redshirt freshman succeeding at corner is is pretty rare and and pretty amazing for Northwestern. Mm -hmm. So defense, very good. Offense, eh. Uh, you gotta, you gotta stop them down on third downs. You, you just have to, cause you know, they're just going to let that play clock go to near zero every play. So they're, gonna, State, yes, they're going to attempt to shorten the game for sure. Mm-hmm. So this is a type of, this is the perfect game for like a tough Borland. You, you, you want those big, 
90 style linebackers in there to try to s- stop Northwestern from getting these three, four, five yard carries. Try to get them to that new yards, tackle them behind the line, and then put them in tough third and six plus yard uh, scenarios there to try to force them to throw it there. I mean, Ramsey is a 59% completion. Not not that great. Right. Nine inter- more interceptions than touchdowns. You, you want to put the, you want to put Peyton Ramsey in a in a tough position there. Kyle, uh, since you brought it up, I have a pair of Ask a Sloopcast questions for you. Sure. Uh, the first one is from Stuart underscore E4US Vet. Northwestern, mm-hmm. who is playing in the middle linebacker spot? And the second one is from Young Kids Mid- Midwest. Uh, Tough or Hilliard, whom do you choose? Okay, so Northwestern, oh, he asked who, Northwestern, who is playing in the, so I'm going to take that Northwestern, who from Northwestern is playing middle linebacker or Ohio State against? I think he's just saying Northwestern. I think he's just trying to say, okay, Northwestern, who is playing in the middle linebacker spot? I think he's specifically saying for this game, I think is what he meant by that. Okay. Uh, so I think here you go with tough Borland. I think tough this year has done really well. Yes. I know everybody's giving him shit in the past couple of years and even us from time to time. He's athletically and, and, limited. He's yes. an incre- incredibly but this, cerebral but this player is, and this a great is that leader. Game. He's athletically mm-hmm. limited. Yep. Th- but this game, don't ha- you don't really need to be that athletic athletically um gifted in this type of um this type of game here i agree tough borland is needing to he's done a really good job being able to read plays read where the ball is going to go i think and i think he'll have another good game here and he's going to do a really good job compared to a lot of other smaller more modern linebackers taking on offensive linemen especially as kyle pointed out some older senior, big, tough, no nonsense, Northwestern, well-developed offensive linemen. Yes. Uh, But to revisit um, the one from young kids, Midwest uh, tough or Hilliard, whom do you choose? That being said, once we maybe play, let's say Clemson, for example, and you're in a more pass heavy situation at that point, I'd probably rather see Hilliard in. Mm -hmm. I'd rather, I'd rather have your more athletically gifted player in place when playing more of a pass focused team, but maybe even then you still look at tough because Travis Etienne, you know, Trevor Lawrence gets all the attention. Travis Etienne's actually been doing most of the work this year. So maybe not. Maybe you're still looking at tough. Maybe it's a tough on one and two and a Hilliard on third down type situation. You know what's crazy here, Jared? What's that? The longest throw, longest throw for Peyton Ramsey this year. Okay. 33 yards. That's not great. Hmm. Seven games in. It's not great. Nope. Nope. Now the question is that say more about Ramsey or more about his wide receivers or maybe just about the offense in general. I think in offense in general. All right. Um, so anything else about this Northwestern team? I think we kind of covered it. Their offense is that just trying to, it's a, it's a death by many, many needles. Death cuts. by many cuts. That's the word. Yeah. Thank you. That's, 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 that's the <laughs> idiom. By you're many for. cuts. And then their defense, their defense is uh, veteran, and you just you can't afford to make mistakes. Kyle, final score prediction. Final score. Oh boy. Um, let's see. This is a fifty-seven over under. It is Ohio State is nineteen and a half favorite here. I'll take Ohio State. Ohio State thirty-one. Northwestern 14. No, I don't think so. 
Okay. I think Ohio State's about to slaughter Northwestern. Okay. I'm thinking that this 20 points is an insult to Ohio State. Okay. I'm thinking like 42 to 12. I'm thinking like 42 to 12. 42 to 12. Yeah. So they, they blow past that. They bo- they blow past the spread by like 10 points. Okay. And for anyone playing at home, that's also under on the over and under. You said 42 to 12. Oh, oh, for the over under. Yes. Yes. All right. That is another Jared difference. We only have one, excuse me, two games that we. So you, I didn't do the math on yours. You picked Northwestern to cover. That is a 17 point victory. You're crazy. You're just handing me this. You just handed me the trophy this year. I almost feel guilty. All right. I almost feel guilty. So let's see. This is the hour. You're not taking mark. it easy on this me. This is are you? the hour mark for episode 33. Just jotting that down. You are handing me mm-hmm. <laughs> this season. All right. Between that and Clemson, like we yeah. might, we might have, f- is it five differences? Is that what it is? is it four or five differences? Just, yeah, just five, pick- five out of seven, five out of seven differences. Let, uh, read them off real quick, just for everyone maybe playing at home. Um, difference for the Louisiana Lafayette coast of Carolina. I had Louisiana. We did the same, I had, we did the same for Oregon. Yeah, I, I had Louisiana, by the way. Yep, and I had Coastal Carolina. We said the same for Oregon. Different for Oklahoma and Iowa State. I had Iowa State. Jared I Clemson. I had Notre Dame. We both picked Bama. Jared picked Cincinnati, I picked Tulsa, Ohio State picked Ohio State, and I picked Northwestern to cover. Yeah, I'm the only one of those I don't feel great about is Louisiana Lafayette and Coastal Carolina. Like you might get me on that one. The other differences I feel great about. All right. I that's all I'm saying. I feel great about them. May the person who <laughs> has won this five in a row win. Hey, I will have won it last because I'm going to win it. All right. All right. We oh, shall man, see. our discord is we shall popping see. off right. right now. All right. Let's 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 go through these last questions real quick here. Jared. Yes. Lightning round. Go. All right. Uh, Stuart underscore E for US vet. Do we see a rotation in the secondary with the way Rocket Hickman played? Or is it back to status quo with Hooker and Proctor? And they're always rotating guys. Uh, so they're always rotating guys. And Mm -hmm. I think you will see more. I think you'll see more Hickman in there based on how he played against Michigan state. I think you'll see a heavier rotation of, of Hickman. Okay. All right. Um, next up here, our homies on card 19 is now the time to start pushing for a neutral sites solid on, Oh, I get it. Is it now time to start pushing for a neutral site solid on solid Michigan game next year? Solid on solid, yes. Neutral site, no. Agreed. Yes and yes. If the game solid were at, on solid, absolutely. I want to see red versus blue so bad. Yes. If the game were at a new, if the game were at neutral site, where would mm-hmm. you choose? No. Always at the horseshoe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just no. I'm not. I'm not even entertaining that. Why? Yep. I mean, yes, I there's agree. Detroit. There's Indianapolis. There's those are two That's domes. It. That's um, it. Then there's Cleveland. There's Cincinnati. Uh, maybe Soldier Field. Maybe Yankee Stadium. No, nah, that's, that's too, too, that's far, too away. far away. Even yeah. Chicago, I felt like I was saying something that it was just too far out of the way. But ultimately, yeah. no. Yes. No, no neutral sites. Solid, right. solid. Yes. Neutral sites. No. Our geographically challenged friend, Michigan Bucknut. What scares you the most about Northwestern's defense? Uh, uh, senior linebacker. Being play. veteran, being veterans on that defense. Yeah. Um, incredibly uh, experienced, intelligent linebacker play. Yes. 
Uh, let's see. That, that is young... it for the questions here. No, don't. We have a couple more from Young Kids Midwest, don't we? Uh, Does oh, Warner yep. get a pick six on Saturday? Uh, if he intercepts it, there's a very good chance he could return that, <laughs> as we mentioned before. But I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, it, that's just to predict any one player getting a pick six. But I mean, I mean, nine interceptions in two games or in seven games. It's not out of the realm of possibility that there'd be a pick or two in this game. But eh. for but for Warner to get an interception, let alone score a touchdown. Yeah, it's just a lot to it's a lot to predict. It the odds are just against it happening in any one game. Mm-hmm. Uh he also asks, uh, how do you think our defense will fare against Northwestern? Fine. Fine. Do you think uh, do we use Browning to cover the tight ends? Sure. I think that's a mm-hmm. uh, 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 Pete Warner will as well. Yep, Pete Hilliard Warner, yes. will. Yeah. Uh, the, a lot of linebackers will. Mm-hmm. Will Hickman get playing time? Uh, we already answered the, the part about Hickman in a previous question. So yeah, but yes, yes, we like, I, I, I do. I think Kyle co signs it. I really like Hickman. Yes. Agreed. All right, Kyle, one more thing. Just one more. Uh, Stuart underscore E4US vet likes to uh, send us stuff that we have to pronounce. Uh, so right. these are some of the hard to pronounce names from the Northwestern Wildcats. I'll go uh, first. Yes, Ethan sir. Whitaker. Whitaker? Whitaker. Ethan Whitaker. Uh, number 76, offensive guard. Mm-hmm. Another offensive guard, number 68, Josh Preeb. I, uh, I, I was thinking that Pride. silent. Yeah, oh. I, I like I like the E being, I like that second E being silent, but I think you need to make that a long I. Yeah, Pribe. Pribe. Josh Pribe. Yep. Um, oh boy. Luca. Luca. Yeah, uh, defensive line, 78. That's the, he's the next one, isn't he? Yeah. Yep. Luca Trifunovic. Trifunovic. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, place, place kicker. Kick, place kicker Charlie Kubander. I'm I you know I am not going to disagree with that. Okay. Uh, defensive end number fifty-five. Uh, Iku Leota. Okay. Uh, Lee Ota. Tight end, Charlie Mangieri? Mangieri? Mangieri. Mangieri. Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay. <laughs> move on. Move on, Jerry. Yeah, moving on. Oh, my goodness. You Why, get the best I, one. Oh, my. You get the best one. Number 49, 49. defensive end. Added. Adetomiwa. Uh, yeah, no, it's not close. <laughs> add it, add Tom Iwa. Add he Bawar. Moving on, number 27, the safety Coco Zema. Yeah, I, I like that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, number 13, Ooh. wide receiver Preston Bacon. I the thank I needed that layup. Thank you, Stuart. All right. All right. Let's just let's just go ahead and move on. I know there's a few more, but we're already way uh, on time here. Yeah, that's a good call. <laughs> uh that's the end of the show, as a matter of fact. The next one was the wide receiver. We already said his name anyway. Then uh Tara Edwards and Jake Jinek. Genick? 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 Genick. Genick. Okay. Genick. Okay. Right. There. Now we now we've finished it. Mm-hmm. Uh that's the end of the episode. Uh guys, once again, we're we're trying to hit a Patreon goal. Uh it's as little as three dollars a month to get you all of the stuff. If you've if you enjoy this show, if we've provided hours of free entertainment to you, maybe maybe consider donating at that three dollar tier. There are a lot of cool benefits. You can read about it on the Patreon site. And we'll increase our episode load if we if we hit that goal. And if 
if everyone donates $3, it'll, it'll take a lot of you to get there, but don't worry about a lot of them worry about just you. And if you can, if you can help us out. Uh, we also now have a 10% discount on Patreon if you pay for an entire year up front. That's a new Patreon feature that we activated. So, like, Kyle, what's... You want to do some quick math for me? Sure. Three times 12. Three times 12 is 36. And then 10% off. What, that put it at about, what, $32? Oh, 36, do, 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 do. Yeah, about 32 and a half. For an entire year. And if we can get a few people to do that, that would be amazing. Um, if you want more information or just want to come chat with us, uh, there are both, it's mostly free. There are some premium sections, but mostly free uh, in the Discord server. If you're unfamiliar with the Discord server, it's basically like a private social media server. It's mm -hmm. like it's somewhere in between a, a group text and uh, like a message board. It's it's, it's somewhere. A in between, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a small inclusive uh, community. Come hang out with us. We just completed our third round of the Ryan Day helmet sticker game. Uh, Michigan Bucknut won it, by the way. He so did. he won our third round. So congratulations to him. As I yes. continue to lose at everything. Uh, visit the sloopcast.com to find links to all of the crap I've been talking about. Also links to our merch stores, also links to our social media, our Apple podcast, our YouTube, our Spotify, our stitch, all that crap. Go to the sloopcast.com and find, it's just a page where you go to find other links, go to the sloopcast.com to find some of the other links I've been talking about. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, how state, not off to the right foot in Big Ten play as they lose to Purdue tonight as we're recording the 67 to 60. Only shooting 25% behind the three. Is it, gonna, is it going to be one of those years where the game is decided by Ohio State's play behind the arc? Is it? Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're a smaller team. You know, they, they don't have a they don't have a true center. Nope. It, it will. Are they going to be one of those teams where it's like, you live or die by the three. Is that what we're looking at? Yeah. I mean, they were six for 24 beyond the three there. Yeah. I mean, they were, they were down, they were down at one point in the first half by 14 and then they started coming back, but it just wasn't, wasn't enough down the stretch there. Well, and then even the guy who you kind of have playing center, even though he, not really, but one of your bigger guys on the team is EJ Liddell, who's not currently with the team due to a non COVID illness. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so definitely, definitely going to be rough here for the next few games here, but we're going to see how many, how well this Ohio state team um, responds, but not off to a great start to open up their big 10 play. Awesome. Well, not awesome, but I, that's just what I say when I want to move on to the next thing, which is the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, we're ending the show. Tonight's ending music will be by the Columbus-based band, The Cordial Sins. So be sure to check them out. I'll include Bandcamp and YouTube links down in the bio. Most of the time, that's what I include in the bio, unless I find other links to provide. Kyle looks like he has something he wants to say. Can we say Delier? Uh-huh. Does commit to Texas A&M. There you go. Uh, yeah, crystal balls are... When the crystal balls start coming in late and fast... That, that's typically what that means. So yeah, that that's lining up good for Ohio State to win the recruiting crown this year. Bama missed out on some of their guys down the line, including Tumi Sayadelier. By the, that's one of the harder names, and we actually learned how to say it. And then he decommitted. Like we we're na if you don't know Tumi Sayadelier, we are nailing that pronunciation. And you committed elsewhere. You decommitted and we said your name right? Come on, I'm just kidding, of course. They're kids, they can commit to wherever they want. I don't I don't even like to pretend to be angry at kids for committing somewhere else. That's I don't even want to pretend to do that. All right, uh that's it. That's the end of the show. Once again, cordial sins. 
Um, and I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, the cordial sins. YouTube. YouTube. Hey, Jared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know. We see it. <laughs> the crew. By the way. Crazy, crazy how that is a crazy, like, 22, 20 month span that was. For the crew. You go you go from, you go from shedding a tear that the team, that the team is moving to shedding a tear in, in, um, joy that they're not moving yep just all the emotions of them not moving to tears of joy for getting their second star yeah and it'll be even better (laughs) when they open the new stadium and what do you get to do on opening day of a new stadium raise a freaking banner you get to raise a banner you get to put that second star on and you get to choose all those beer (laughs) <laughs> I'm looking forward All to that the beer. There's a beer garden in the, I think we're still calling it the Nordeke. I think we're still going to call it that. So yeah, there's a beer garden in the Nordeke and I'm looking forward to trying some. So yes. yeah, uh, Kyle, let's, let's, uh, let's end this episode. Let's rejoin our audio listeners. Once again, we'd like to thank the Cordial Sins for ending today's show. And I'd once again like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, the Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, Toledo-based, Perrysburg-based. Just keep getting more specific. Probably should have gone down straight to the address. Because if you live in Toledo, not only can you get the, not only can you order the coffee and have it roasted, you can also go and pick it up at the location. And you can do all of that and you can avoid shipping cost. You're getting it, like I said, fresh roasted. You can get whichever coffee you want and you avoid shipping cost, and you avoid even those, you know, couple days it might spend in the mail to get it even that much more fresh. Now, that being said, when I ordered my coffee, it showed up like in a couple days. So and I live in Columbus. It's not a far trip for the postman to make, but point is is that you're still getting your coffee insanely fresh even through the mail uh and on top of that if you spend fifty dollars or more which i did you get free shipping they have gift cards available for christmas and there is a subscribe and save feature if you find that one coffee that is your one true love you can do a monthly subscribe and save feature also through ironbeancoffee.com so all of that I already told you why they're great. They're marine owned, they're Ohio based, fair trade, organic, roast to order, hand roast, all, all that amazing stuff that makes them great. And you and like I said, it's you can get your coffee the freshest possible way you can get your coffee. Whole bean or ground. And uh, you can find all of that at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian has three great sets to purchase for your special friend, family member, or yourself this holiday. They have the Just Send It, which consists of the S&P Bud, the Soren Heat, Cajun, and the Smoked. It's our good um, beginner set. Yes. They have the Sweet Heat. The versatile set, I like to call it. Yes. They have the Sweet Heat, or as I call the Wing Set. Yes. Four Horsemen, the Discord Two Border, and the Old Fashioned. Or I'm not you yet can get put to the Two Border on wings, but I must say that sounds amazing, and I'm gonna have to try it. Yes. Or you can get one of each of the fourteen seasonings by purchasing the whole hog. Be sure to also use the promo code Sloopcast ten at checkout. That is Sloopcast one zero for ten percent extra on top of the sets. Um, deals that the Mad Canadian has at checkout. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered for Christmas. YouTube, my face, playlist, Kyle's face, subscribe. Please subscribe, no matter where you're watching this. Please subscribe to both the Buckeye Scoop 
YouTube page and the Buckeye Sloopcast Twitter page. Please subscribe to both. That's it. That's all. Bye, everybody. Peace.